This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. One of the most common fears among new EV owners is that their car's battery packs will require replacement at some point during the vehicle's lifetime. As we've noted plenty on this channel, the average EV battery pack can outlive the vehicle it was fitted to. And while there are exceptions, most EVs will go through their life not needing a battery pack replacement. This week, Chinese firm CATL drove that fact home by detailing how its latest iteration of its long service life battery, currently being used in commercial vehicles, has a 16-year, 1.24 million mile potential lifespan. It's published a new YouTube video detailing the four key things that help its pack have a long life. Low lithium consumption technology, a bionic self-repairing electrolyte and self-passivating film on each cell's cathode, as well as what it calls flexible expansion force management. This week, at the 2024 Republican National Convention, the U.S. Republican Party officially nominated former President Donald Trump and Senator J.D. Vance as presidential and vice presidential candidates for the Republican Party for the upcoming U.S. general election. Why mention this in an EV News Roundup show? Easy. J.D. Vance is notoriously anti-EV and has authored proposed legislation in the past that aims to replace the U.S. federal tax credit for EVs with a similarly sized tax credit for gasoline and diesel powered vehicles, with larger vehicles getting more money. Despite this, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has come out to publicly endorse both candidates, claiming that Tesla doesn't need incentives anyway. Luxury brand Genesis, sibling brand to Hyundai and Kia, has gained market share in recent months in the luxury electric vehicle segment thanks to its competitively executed EV models. Genesis has for some time said its end goal was to become a luxury electric vehicle mark and, thanks to the eGMP platform, it has the chops to make that happen. But this week, the brand appeared to backpedal with CEO Mike Song confirming that customers now want hybrid rather than electric and thus the brand will be pivoting to bring as many hybrid models to market as quickly as possible. It's not clear if these models will be hybrid or plug-in hybrid but that's a long way from the originally promised all-electric by 2025. Sticking with disappointing news a little while longer, General Motors CEO Mary Barra admitted this week that the brand won't reach its previous goal of building 1 million EVs a year by 2025. Blaming GM's slowdown on the market not developing quickly enough, Mary Barra seemed to suggest in an interview to CNBC that GM is ultimately looking at an electric future but wasn't keen on setting a new target. Date. Instead, she simply stated that GM will be, quote, guided by the customer, end quote, a euphemism we've been hearing a lot of lately that simultaneously blames the consumer while refusing to make a commitment to a cleaner future. It's worth noting that GM is still opposing several new emissions regulations for new vehicles. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6 have proven to be massive sellers for the Hyundai Kia family of vehicles, with seemingly every new month of sales setting new records for each. The two sibling brands, like most of the auto industry in the US, are transitioning to adopt J3400, aka Tesla's NAX adapter for future model years. And this week, we got news of multiple sightings of pre-production EV6 and Ionic 5 models wearing full camouflage while testing charging capabilities at Tesla superchargers. Both vehicles were not using a NAX adapter, but instead were plugged directly into a Tesla supercharger. 
While Kia has yet to respond to the sighting, Hyundai did confirm it plans to launch J3400 equipped cars before the end of this year. Porsche has announced that it's expanded its all-new Macan EV series with several new variants. At the entry-level end, there's a new rear-wheel drive Macan fitted with a 250 kilowatt motor and 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's the lightest Macan EV to be launched to date, but still manages a respectable 5.4 second sprint time. At the same time, Porsche has added a new 4S trim variant of the Macan fitted with all-wheel drive, utilising the same rear-wheel drivetrain found in the entry-level model, but paired with the front-wheel drivetrain from the Macan 4 and Macan Turbo. The two models start at 75,300 and 84,900 US dollars, respectively. Despite the political backlash that has already started to head Tesla's way over Elon Musk's backing of anti-EV candidates in the US presidential election, Tesla's Cybertruck is selling well. According to new sales data, Tesla's Cybertruck outsold every other electric pickup truck in the US during May, selling 3,907 examples. At the same time, Cybertruck became the fifth most popular EV by registration in the US for the month, with the Model 3 and the Model Y taking up two of the other slots. I've seen plenty of discussion online about Cybertruck sales, and it is worth noting that Tesla is working through its backlog of reservations, but it certainly suggests that Tesla's Cybertruck sales could continue to rise for some time to come. There have been a lot of news stories floating around this week concerning Aptera and its plans to bring its solar electric vehicle to market. While Aptera has yet to publish its July update video at the time of filming, during which we've heard plenty of rumours it will announce a dumping of in-wheel motors for something else, Aptera announced this week that it's working with US Capital to raise up to 60 million US dollars in convertible notes as part of its latest funding round. According to Aptera, its latest funding round should raise the funds it needs to build between 10 and 12 validation prototypes, with which it will complete crash testing, after which it will then build between 10 and 15 production intent vehicles that will eventually be sold off. It is still, though, a long way from volume manufacturing. Back in 2020, at its first battery day, Tesla unveiled its new 4680 form factor battery cells that it promised would revolutionise its EV production. Designed in-house, the 4680 form factor cells promised five times the energy density, six times the power density and 16% more range than previous cells Tesla was using. And used in some of Tesla's vehicles today, it's already proving popular. But now we're hearing reports that claim Elon Musk has given Tesla's battery experts until the end of the year to fix issues with the cells that currently plague the prospect of massive volume production. Alternatively, Elon may choose to give up on in-house battery cells. While Tesla has not responded to reporting from V Information, it's well known that Tesla has not yet ramped up production of 4680 cells to the volumes it promised several years ago. Our final story for the segment is, I'm afraid, more sad news for those who like Nissan EVs, specifically that Nissan has officially stopped production of the Leaf for the Kiwi market. We learned midweek that, citing poor sales in Australia and Aotearoa, New Zealand, Nissan has already ceased all right-hand drive production for both markets, and while you're still able to officially order one to buy as soon as the existing stock in inventory is spoken for, you are pretty Pretty much done. It's such a shame to see Nissan play these kind of games, especially after last week's news regarding the Aria. With no Nissan EV models for the Kiwi market from now on, if you want one, you're going to have to opt for a grey market import or pick from one of Nissan's rivals, many of which have amazing EVs you can buy instead. Which is perfect timing, because before we get to the last two stories, I want to know if you are in the market for a new EV, because if you are, 
and you're an Aotearoa, you should very much check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. It's no secret that British firm Jaguar has been struggling a lot of late with sales of both of its internal combustion and electric vehicles dwindling in recent months. As a brand, Jaguar is eager to be reborn as a hyper-luxury electric vehicle brand and has promised for a while that it will end ICE vehicle production. This week, the firm confirmed that it's already ended production of most of its ICE vehicles and will shortly end production of the rest, including the Jaguar I-Pace as it plans for a new raft of models for next year. Many of Jaguar's current models, including the I-Pace, are made by contract manufacturing partner Magnus Stair, spelling bad news for the firm after it recently lost Fisker as a customer. Jaguar's new models will launch toward the end of this year, but even its entry-level models are expected to be in excess of 100 grand. And finally, Tesla's Giga Berlin, where European Market Model 3 and Model Y are made, has been a bit of a headache from day one for Tesla. Aside from delays in construction, Tesla has fought almost continuously with worker unions over the facility, and this week there's threat of a potential strike over safety concerns, pay and more. But there's also something else weird going on at Giga Berlin, namely what Tesla claims is the theft of over 65,000 coffee mugs from the facility's various break rooms. Now a Tesla manager is threatening to take away cutlery at Giga Berlin if the threats continue. I don't think that's going to have the exact desired effect. Honestly, I think most Germans I know have quite the sense of humour. And on that note, we are in fact done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual, and in the meantime, do check out other videos on this channel, including some amazing content from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. So until next time, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Have an amazing rest of your week. Kakite! See you next time. Bye.